Hey everybody, I am super excited to be back with another video for you guys. This one is very exciting for me because it is kicking off my Halloween sets or my spooky fall season sets. I am super excited about this. Fall is my favorite season if you didn't know. Halloween is my favorite holiday and I just love all the different like creative designs and sets that come out of the season. So I'm excited to get started with this for you guys. So I am just starting off this set since I am doing a kind of beginner friendly set today I'm doing all of my design work topically so all I'm doing is removing the gel polish from my previous nail set and I'm leaving the colored acrylic um, on it so that I can just do a fill so this will show you kind of the process of what I do when I'm doing a fill and redesign so I am going in I do my filing kind of backwards so I keep my hand file in reverse when I'm working on on my left hand and I just pull away from myself I feel like it's faster for me than having to bend my hand in all these weird directions so I go ahead and just file it that way I use a little like plastic topper for my bits just as like a little stabilizer for my hand and to do this I have my Kiara Sky Beyond Pro drill at about 20,000 rpms and I'm using a coarse carbide bit to do this and I'm not going all the way to the cuticle I'm getting as close as I can but I I will flip it into forward and then do the cuticle area just to be a little bit more precise and risk cutting myself a little bit less so I am going ahead and removing all of that gel polish as well as shortening up this set since I've had it on for about two maybe two and a half weeks now um, and then once I go in forward I actually kind of lower the rpms of my e-file the reason for this is that I'm really just working on that back cuticle area and I don't need it to be going as fast and cut through as thick of product back there so I just lower it to about 15,000 rpms really when it comes to the speed of your e-file it's whatever you're comfortable with there are general guidelines like for example a lot of people recommend prep between like three and six thousand rpms and then for like debulking anywhere from like 12 to 20 20,000 rpm so it just really depends on what your comfortability is what e-file and bit you're using and what products you're trying to remove so really just play around with it but for this product and for this set these are the speeds that I'm going at so if you want to use those for reference Once all of that is done, I'm going in with my small mandrel bit by Kiara Sky and the fine grit sanding band that goes along with it. I am kind of using this in replacement of doing two steps. So I normally use a normal size mandrel bit and then I go in with a cuticle bit, whether it's like a flame bit um, or a needle nose bit to just really make sure that I'm getting all of that dead skin and cuticle off of my nail plate for my application. Um, with the small mandrel bit, I do feel like you can kind of do both of those steps in one um, it just depends on how thick and unruly your cuticles are if you feel like you have a lot of dead skin and cuticle buildup um, that you need to get up this may not do all of the job that you need it to so you may still need to go in with an, a cuticle bit but I feel like if your cuticles are doing okay and you're not really feeling like there's a lot that you have to get up this actually does the job very well by itself um, just because it has that smaller shape so it's really able to get into to those small areas and get all that dead skin up. Um, I do this prep step at about four or five thousand RPMs, um, depending on how I'm feeling. And I also use the mandrel bit to smooth out the underneath of my nail and just kind of thin it out since my nails have grown out and I've shortened them, so they are going to be a little thicker towards the tip now. And I do make sure that I'm thinning out the ledge between the previous product and my natural nail so that I have a smoother application when I go in with my acrylic. Now I'm going in with the acrylic primer from Chon Legends Nail Brand. This is the first time that I'm using this product. I will say I noticed that it's kind of similar to the Kiara Sky one if you've ever tried that. It has kind of a gel consistency. It stays like this glossy look on the nail. It doesn't dry down like a traditional liquid acrylic primer would. Um, although I would say it's a little thinner than the Kiara Sky one. So it's not that like thick, very jelly type of consistency. 
weight. So if you like the Kiara Sky one, but you felt that it was just a little bit too thick for your liking, this one might be a happy medium for you. Um, you don't have to cure it or anything, so it's not like an actual gel product, but it is different than a lot of the acrylic primers on the market. So I will update you guys in future videos on what I think about how it holds up um, throughout like wear, but for right now I do like it and the brush was very easy to apply and it's very like small and tapered so I feel like when you're using it on like smaller nail beds you're not going to risk like flooding the nail as easily because the brush is a little bit more tapered so I did like that as well. I am using the Tron Legend acrylic brush as well. This one's the size 8. If you wanted to see me unbox all the sizes that he offers you can check out my unboxing video that I will link in the cards as well as in the description box below. Um, I did purchase all of the different sizes that he offers but as far as my first impression of using the brush I really do like it it is a round brush which takes some getting used to for me because I'm used to pinch brushes but I do like the way that it applied and it felt very good quality as I was using it I didn't feel like acrylic was getting stuck in the brush too much so I do like it but I am applying the not polished clear acrylic because I'm not using the color acrylic as my base color it really doesn't matter matter what color I do for my fill and since I'm not doing this orangey tone color again to me it just seemed like it defeated the purpose of me needing to do the fill with that same color so I'm just doing it with the clear I know it's not gonna look the prettiest when the application of the acrylic is done but once all the design work is done you're not gonna notice this at all so um, just a quick tip if you are doing fills on clients I do like a clear layer underneath my colored acrylic anyway um, so as they grow out if you end up needing to change colors um, it's easier for you to file down to the clear and then change the colored acrylic on top but if you're doing what I'm doing today which is you're just doing a topical design you don't need to actually file off all of the previous colored acrylic you can go ahead and just fill it with a clear or a nude even and then just go in with your design work it does save you some time because colored acrylic I think takes a little bit longer to dry um, it can save you money if you're in a salon setting because clear Clear acrylic or nude acrylic tends to be cheaper than colored acrylic so um, it's just kind of like a little hack but like I said it's not gonna look the prettiest once the application is done it's really gonna be once your design work and everything is done that you're not gonna notice it anymore the only thing you just want to be mindful of um, when you're doing topical designs over colored acrylic if you're not removing all of it is that you want to make sure that whatever colors and design work you're doing on top is gonna cover whatever color you have so if you have a darker color like I do today you really can't go for like super light colored designs you got to make sure that it's a dark enough color to really conceal that so that's the only thing you really have to consider when doing this method once all of the acrylic is applied, you can go ahead and start filing. I'm pretty much starting by filing the edges and kind of the shape of my nail before I debulk it. I'm just using a 100 grit file. And as you can see, I'm just kind of comparing it to my other hand, just making sure that the size of my taper, since these are coffin nails, as well as my length are the same on both hands. So I don't have kind of wonky looking nails when I'm done with everything. Um, if you're doing this on your own hand, you're just gonna kind of have to compare as you go if you're doing this on a client it might be a little bit easier but I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and then once my shape is pretty much where I want it to be I'm going in with a fine grit carbide bit and I am going to debulk any excess acrylic since this is just a fill there's not really a whole lot of bulk that I have to take off um, so I'm just gonna take off whatever I need to and I am using this at 10,000 rpms again there's not a whole lot of acrylic I gotta cut through so I'm not super worried about trying to cut down on my time so once that's done I just get it kind of generally to where I need it to be and then I go back in with that file and I just smooth over the top really get my shape perfected as much as possible and pretty much this is the same process that I do on all of the nails so you just kind of go through and finish that up and then once all of that is done I go over the entire nail with a medium grit sanding band I do this process anywhere between five and seven thousand rpms depending on 
what I'm going for but for today I'm doing 5,000 rpms and I'm just smoothing the underneath of the nail over top um, of the surface because I feel like this helps get rid of any deep scratches on the nail that you might have from the hand file and it just really smooths out the surface so if you have any areas that may not be perfectly smooth this really makes sure that you kind of have that all evened out before you go in and apply your gel polish and it leaves enough of a grit on the surface of the nail for your gel polish to still adhere to so next I'm going in with a Madame Glam gel polish I've used this one before I can't remember the name of it right now so I will link it down below but it's just a deep deep purple color and I am going and applying two coats of this to my thumb my pinky and my ring finger I am doing the entire nail with this so I am just applying this as I would a traditional polish um, and again just curing in between each layer. So I'm going to do two layers on all three of these nails and then I will go in with my design work. Next I'm using my Young Nails Ultimate Finish Gel. I'm using this because it is a no wipe gel and it has a little bit of a thicker consistency so it's not going to move as much for the, what I need it to do. So what I'm actually going to do is a sugared glitter effect so I'm going to pour glitter over top of this nail. So I prefer to do this with a slightly thicker gel. For one it doesn't move as easily when I'm pouring the glitter as well as it holds on to the glitter just a little bit better than thinner gels at least that's my experience so you can play around and see what works for you but definitely you need to use a non wipe gel top coat so make sure you're using that because if it does have a sticky base you're still gonna have that sticky dispersion layer and you're not gonna be able to easily take that off since you'll have that rough glitter texture on top of the nail and once you apply it you just go ahead and cure it as you normally would also, um, I think I forgot to say, these glitters are from Michael that I'm using. Um, it's just the craft store. Uh, I will link down below um, if I can find them, but I just got these in a set from Michael, so I don't know if you can purchase them individually or not. And now I'm going in with Black Licorice number 447. This is a D&D gel polish, and I'm applying this to my pointer and my ring finger. So as you can see, you don't see that orange color underneath the nail. The only time you're really gonna see it is when I flip my hand over, but depending on what color you have underneath, you're not really gonna even notice it then. So I made sure that the colors that I was using covered up all of that colored acrylic so that it wouldn't get in the way of the new design. But I I'm doing two coats of this gel polish today just to make sure I have it as opaque and smooth as I can um, and then I'm gonna go in with some gel paints. For the gel paints, I'm using Profiles Backstage Frosting Gel Paint in Neon Green and Young Nails um, Mission Control Gel Paint in Fizz, which is their white shade. And I'm using Young Nails Striper Brush to create vertical lines down my nails. I'm doing this on the two nails that I painted in black, so my middle finger and my pointer finger. Some tips because I wanted this video to be as beginner friendly as possible. If you're using gel, you don't have to worry about it drying before you cure it. So if you make mistakes, it's really easy to just wipe it off and start again. Um, you just use some rubbing alcohol um, to take off the old design and then work on redoing it the way that you want it to be. And another tip is you don't have to do it all at once like I'm doing. You can do one or two lines. If you like where they are, then just cure them in your lamp for like 15 to 30 seconds and then go ahead and do the next lines in kind of a second step. It's going to help you reduce the amount of mistakes that you have and kind of help make sure that you're keeping your design work as clean as possible and since it's gel it's a lot easier to do in steps than like a traditional polish would be. Next I'm going in with the neon green gel paint. I'm using a dotting tool for this. You can find these at most uh, nail shops or on Amazon. Sally Beauty Supply has them. So, um, or you can use the back of a brush, whatever works for you. And I'm creating that like slime blood drip kind of design. I'm basically dotting where I want the drip to end. And then I'm just taking my small liner brush and just pulling up the product towards my cuticle area. 
The only thing to keep in mind as you're doing this is to just make sure that the edges are rounded so that it looks like an actual drip effect instead of looking like a random like drawn on line. As you can see I'm kind of rounding the edges as I get to the cuticle area and that's going to give you that actual drip effect. So I am doing this same design on the middle three nails so my pointer, middle finger and my ring finger. Um, when you do it on top of the stripe design you do have to do multiple layers so I I think I did between two and three layers on each of these nails otherwise you can kind of see that stripe design through the green gel liner um, and it almost looks like a jelly effect instead of like a green slime like I wanted it to so um, all you have to do is create the design cure it and then just go over top with that same color just to make it look more opaque once you're done with that, you can go ahead and top coat over the gel design. I am going to be using the Young Nails Ultimate Finish Top Coat for this as well. You don't need to top coat over the sugared nail design because it's meant to have that textured effect. So you can leave those ones once you cure the glitter into your lamp. You just kind of leave it the way that it is. Um, so once you're done top coating that, you can start working on your other hand. Um, I am right handed, so as you can see, I'm currently working on my left hand. Hand, which makes it easier for me to do um, more design work and more detailed work um, but I wanted to be beginner friendly so I'm not doing a lot of detail work on my right hand and I'm not gonna show you it on camera because all I'm really doing is the sugared effect on all five of those nails um, I'm gonna keep the same orientation of the gel colors that I have on my left hand though so that it still looks cohesive and it still looks like one consistent nail design instead of being two separate designs so what I did was I just took that purple gel polish and I applied that to my thumb, my pinky, and my ring finger and then I sugared that purple glitter over top. And then for my pointer and my middle finger, I went in with that black gel polish and I sugared over some black glitter. So that way it looks cohesive and still matches the other hand, but I didn't have to do a lot of detail work and struggle with that using my non-dominant hand. So as you can see, it still all goes together and is very cohesive with each other um, but it makes it a lot more beginner friendly than trying to recreate the drips and the stripes all on my non-dominant hand or sorry on my dominant hand so um, that is pretty much it for this nail video I hope you guys enjoyed it thumbs this video up if you liked it let me know if you watched the second Beetlejuice movie and what you thought of it I really liked it so I hope you guys do too um, comment below letting me know what you would like to see from me in the future and subscribe to my channel other than that I hope you guys are having a wonderful day wherever you are and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye everybody!